Welcome to Electron Online, and here we're going to talk about a beam under compression. We have two forces acting on the beam. The beam is angled at 35 degrees away from the wall here. It's hinged so that it can move back and forward. We have a force of 1,000 Newton pulling on the end of the beam in this direction. And then we have a cable holding up against the wall. So there's a hook right there. And so we have a force acting in this direction. Let's call this tension 1. And then we have this beam is going to be under compression. The reason why we know the beam is under compression is because both of these forces have a component that acts against the beam and no component away from the beam. So the beam is being pushed into the hinge here. So therefore the beam is under compression. So that means the forces acting at this location is going to be this force acting this way, this force acting this way, and then the beam pushing back in this direction along the length of the beam. And that is the force that we're trying to find. So if we're going to, let's see here, let me use a different color. So let's say that we have the beam pushing back this way, and let's call that tension two, or well, tension compression, doesn't matter, we'll just use T for the symbol and we're trying to figure out what this is equal to. So this is the question, how much force is acting on the beam based upon these two forces right here? All right, in order to figure that out, we have to, of course, add up all the force in the x direction, the y direction, because we know that since it's a static situation, the sum of all the forces in the, in the x direction add up to zero, and the sum of all the forces in the y direction add up to zero, and we'll use those two equations to solve for the unknown. In order to do that, we have to find the components first. We need to find the x and y components of each of the three forces. We have to find the x and y components here. And let's use different colors so we can keep them apart. So there's going to be the um, force in the x direction. And here's going to be the force in the y direction. And since we have an angle of 20 degrees there, and this would be the opposite side to this angle, f sub x would therefore be equal to f times the sine of 20 degrees. And yes, it does seem odd to be using the sine for the x component, but that's the way this is drawn. If you take this component and put it down there, it will be the opposite side to this angle, 20 degrees. And here, this would be equal to f times the cosine of 20 degrees because it will be adjacent to the angle. Plug in the numbers, we get 1,000 newtons times the sine of 20 degrees. And here we get 1,000 newtons times the cosine of 20 degrees. And we'll figure that out in just a moment. So those are the x and y components of that force. Now we want to find the x and y components for the tension in the cable. And so this would here be the x component, and this here would be the y component. So this here would be T1 in the y direction, and this here would be T1 in the x direction. All right. So what angle are we dealing with? We have the angle of 60 degrees right there. And maybe what we want to do is bring the angle over here and make this a 30 degree angle, because this is, of course, a right triangle right here. And then we can use this angle to come up with this T1 sub, T sub Y. That would be T1 times the Notice that this would be in the opposite direction or the opposite side of the angle. So this becomes T1 times a sine of 30 degrees. And this here would be T1x, which is T1 times a cosine of 30 degrees, because that would be the adjacent side to the 30 degree angle. All right, now we still have to deal with this right here. We want to find the, the two components. Let me use the blue color for that. So we want to find uh, T2 in the x direction, and we want to find T2 in the y direction. Okay, so here we have a 35 degree angle, which is this angle right here, that would be 35 degrees. For this angle, mm, I guess we could use that same angle right here, 35 degrees. All right, that will work. So T, T2x, that would be this component right here. Let me make that a little bit smaller so it looks a little bit better. All right, so this would be the opposite side to the angle. So therefore T2x would be equal to T2 times the sine of 35 degrees. And then for T2y, that would be equal to T2 times the cosine of 35 degrees. Again, it seems odd that we use the sine for the x component, cosine for the y component, but again, it doesn't matter. We just have to look at it, realize that this component will go over here. That makes it the opposite side to the angle. Therefore, we use the sine. Okay, now with a calculator, we can figure out what these components are. So 35, take the sine of that. Oop, let me try it again. 35, take the sine. That'll be 0.5736. 
So that would be 0 0.5736 times T2. That would be the X component. For the Y component, we take 35 times the cosine. That would be, uh, that would be equal to 0 0.8198192 times T2. So here we have the X and the Y components of the force on the beam. Now going back to the green color. So the sine of 20 degrees, so 20, take the sine of that, that would be times 1,000, that would be 342 newtons. That would be the X component of the force acting on the beam. And here we take the cosine of 20, cosine, that would be uh, times 1,000, that would be 940, just call it 940 newtons in the Y direction. Okay, now we still need to find the X and Y components for the cable, the tension on the cable. So the cosine of 30, that's 0 0.866, that would be 0 0.866 times T1. And over here, the sine is 1 half, so that would be 0 0.5 times T1. So now we have all the X and Y components of all the forces, including the force acting on the beam, which is what we're looking for. Now we can use these two equations to add up all the X and Y components to solve for T1 and T2. All right. Let's look at the, all the x components first. So we have the sum of the forces in the x direction, which is equal to zero, which is equal to, this is a positive force because it's acting to the right. That would be positive 342 newtons. We, uh, let's see here, we also have another positive force right here that is plus T2x. And then we have a negative component here. This is acting to the left, so that's a minus minus uh, T1x. And plugging in the what we know, so we have 0 equals 342 newtons plus T2x, which is 0 0.5736 T2 and minus 0 0.866 T1. So here we have an equation with the two unknowns T1 and T2. Of course, since we have two unknowns, T1 and T2, we're going to need a second equation. Therefore, we're going to need this equation to find, to be able to solve for those two unknowns. All right, sum of the forces in the y direction add up to zero. So what do we have here? We have this negative 940 newtons because it's acting in a negative direction. So that's equal to minus 940 newtons. Then we have this component right here that would be plus T2 in the y direction. And then we have this component right here, plus T1 in the y direction. So this becomes 0 equals minus 940 newtons plus T2y. Okay, that would be plus 0 0.8192 T2. And over here, we're going to add the y component here. That would be plus 0 0.5 T1. And there's our second equation. So when we solve those two equations simultaneously, we'll be able to solve for T1 and T2. All right, let's see here. What would be the best thing to do? Since we're looking for T2, let's replace T1 with what T1 is equal to. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve maybe this equation for T1 and then plug it into this equation right here. All right, let's do that. So we move all the, the two other components to the other side of the equation, turn the equation around, so end up with 0 0.5 T1 is equal to a positive 940 newtons, because I moved the 940 to the other side, and then a minus 0 0.8192 T2, and then multiplying everything by 2, we get T1 is equal to double that, that would be 1880 newtons, uh, minus, so we have minus 1.638. All right, T2. So now we have T1 in terms of T2, and we can plug that into the equation over here to solve this equation for T2. So let's do that. So this equation comes down here, and we get the following. 0 equals 342 newtons plus 0 0.5736 T2 minus, and instead of writing, whoop, minus, I I guess I need this first, minus 0 0.866 times, and instead of writing T1, we're going to write what T1 is equal to, which is 1880 newtons, minus 1.6384 T2, 
All right, now all I have to do here is solve this equation for T2. It's very straightforward. It looks a little messy because it's got big numbers in there, but let's go ahead and work that out. So first of all, we'll combine like terms, so we'll multiply this times that. So we got 0 0.866 times 1880 equals, that's negative, so that's minus, and add that plus 342 equals, so we had zero is equal to, when I combine this and this together, I get a minus 1,286 newtons. And now I have to combine this and this. I'll multiply this times this. I'll make it positive because there's a negative and a negative here. So we have 0 0.866 times 1.6384 equals. Then we add that to the 0.5736 plus 0.5736 equals. And that gives us a plus 1.9925 uh, T2. All right, so now all I have to do is solve that for T2. So I can say that T2 is equal to, when I move this to the other side, it becomes positive, 1,286 newtons divided by this number, 1.9925. So we'll take the inverse of that and multiply it times 1286 and they get 645 newtons. And that would be the compression force on the beam caused by this force acting on it on this side and then the cable pulling out in that direction. So the beam will therefore be under compression with a force of 645 newtons. That's how it is done.